In this video, I'd like to talk more about the Koch snowflake. And in the previous video, we talked about finding the length around the outside of this fractal. And we were able to prove that the perimeter is infinite. But for this video, I want to focus on figuring out the area of this fractal. Or in other words, figuring out how much space the inside of this shape actually takes up. And the process for finding the area is a little bit complicated since we will have to sum an infinite series. We'll have to add up an infinite amount of terms, but if we work through this slowly and carefully, it is something that is relatively straightforward. And to find the area, we're going to be able to find a formula for the area based off the starting equilateral triangle. In fact, we will start with this triangle and we can say that each of the sides have length s, s for side length, and our final formula for the area of the snowflake will be based off of s. And to begin, we need to first figure out what is the formula for the area of some general equilateral triangle. So let's take a closer look at that. And let me draw in an equilateral triangle very quickly. And let's say this equilateral triangle has side lengths of x. We'll use a different letter so that we don't confuse it with the letter s over here, since we'll actually be looking at smaller equilateral triangles that have different side lengths that are smaller than s. So let's talk about it generally. And remember that the area of any triangle is one half of the base multiplied by the height. So if we can figure out the height of this equilateral triangle, we can just plug that into the formula where the base is x. And this height can be found if we drop a vertical line that is perpendicular to the base. And this height here can be found by recognizing that each of these two triangles is a 30, 60, 90 triangle, where this is the 30 degree angle, this is the 60, and we have a right angle. And you might remember that in a 30, 60, 90 triangle, the smallest side is half of the hypotenuse, which makes this x over two. And the height is the square root of three multiplied by the smallest side, which means in this general equilateral triangle, the height is the square root of three multiplied by x over two. And if you want to prove this for yourself, you can use the Pythagorean theorem and solve for h here. But since we have the height, we can plug that into our formula and determine that the area of this equilateral triangle is one half the base, which is x, multiplied by the height, which is the square root of three, multiplied by x over two. And if we simplify everything, we have four in the denominator, we have the square root of three, and x times x is x squared. And this formula here, we will use repeatedly when figuring out the area of this Koch snowflake. So we can copy this formula and use it as we go. Now, going back to our picture here of the steps of creating the Koch snowflake, we know this is our step zero, our starting point. This is step one, when we add in equilateral triangles in the middle of each of the side lengths after splitting them into three equal pieces. And we'll carry out that process infinitely many times. This is step two, this is step three, and so on. And to find the area, let's think about this piece by piece. So we can say that the total area is equal to the area from step zero. We can find this area using that formula we just found. And then in step one, notice that we still have the space that our, the original triangle took up, but then we're adding three new triangles here. And we'll have to add the area of those three new equilateral triangles. And then when we get down to step two, notice that we have everything from step one. That's all of this that I'm coloring in 
and orange, but then we're adding in new triangles that you can see here. These are again going to be equilateral triangles and we have four on each of the three side lengths, which means that we have 12 new triangles here. And then for step three, we have everything from step two, but then we're adding in these tiny new equilateral triangles here. And if you count them up or if you just follow the logic that we'll go through, there's 48 of those. And for step four, there will be 196 new equilateral triangles. And essentially the number of new triangles multiplies by four each step, but we will see that as we go. So the general strategy is to find the area of the original one, then add the area of these three new ones, then add the area of the 12 small ones here, then the area of the 48 here, and so on. And you can imagine this process is infinitely long, so we will be adding up an infinite amount of areas. But we can notice some patterns and there is a way to actually figure this out, to come up with some finite value. You might be tempted to think that the area will be infinite since we'll be adding up an infinite amount of things, but for certain sums, it is possible to add up an infinite amount of terms and still get a finite answer. And we will look at how to calculate that as we go through this.